Hey guys, what's up? Murphy's Opinions here, and today I'm coming to you with my review of The Spy Who Loved Me, uh, made in 1977, directed by Lewis Gilbert. And this was Roger Moore's third outing as James Bond. Uh, so let's just get into the main plot of the film. So what's the plot about? Um, basically, when a massive underwater craft abducts US and Russian submarines, global tensions are heightened uh, to the brink of war. In order to find the true culprit, James Bond joins forces with Russian secret agent Anya Amasova. Together they follow the, tr the trail, which leads to Carl Stromberg, a powerful shipping magnet who is implementing a horrific scheme for world domination. Um, so that's, yeah, so that's basically the main plot. Um, so now let's get into the cast of the film and my thoughts on that. For the most part, I think that the Spy Who Loved Me cast is actually a pretty solid cast overall. I mean, you've got Roger Moore back in it as James Bond and... Um, he comes, obviously, he, in my opinion, I thought he had a quite a dodgy performance as the man, in The Man with the Golden Gun. Um, but I think here he really um, steps up and delivers probably the best performance of his uh, J like James Bond career, I guess you could say. He's just really comfortable in the role. He's smooth, he's cool, he's suave. You know, he's just, I, I think this is more at his best, I think. Um, and I think after this, um, after Spy Who Loved Me, He's very consistent in his roles up until, well, I'd say A View to a Kill, uh, personally. I think he's just great in this film, and I'd say it's his best performance as James Bond, as I said. Um, and then you've got Anya Amasova, played by Barbara Bark. Um, I think she's a great Bond girl. She's, you know, this is when they started to make the Bond girls, you know, more independent in terms of, like, fighting. And, like, you know, she could hold her own, you know, she, obviously she's, like, a secret agent for the Russians. Um, I think she's really awesome here. I think her and Moore have great chemistry in this film. Uh, they play really well off each other. A lot of people have criticised her wooden acting at times. I mean, it is kind of there in certain bits. But I think she's great for the most part. And she's definitely one of my personal favourite Bond girls. I'd definitely put her in the top ten. Uh, probably not right near the top, but definitely in the mix, I would say. One of the only real complaints in this cast, I can really say, is... And it's not even to do with the guy playing him. It's more just the character himself. Uh, Stromberg, played by Kurt Jurgens. Now, I want to say here, there are a few Bond villains in the series where... They're one of the weaker Bond villains, but it's not because of how they're played or the like the character. It's mainly to do with just not having enough screen time. And I think Stromberg is a great example of this. Like I think Kurt Jurgens plays him really well. He's really sinister, really cold, and he had potential to be a really great Bond villain. However, I just feel he's not given enough time. But Jurgens, for the most part, for what he has, he does um he does well with it. Like there's a scene that I'll talk about in a minute where. I think he really shows great, you know, um, just shows great elements of being great Bond villain. I think um, I think they could have done more with Stromberg. Um, I just don't think he's in the film long enough. However, uh, Richard Keel, who is playing Jaws, uh, definitely one of my favourite henchmen in the film. Definitely makes the top five. Um, he's such an intimidating figure and presence. Um, he's just someone who... He's such an iconic henchman, and he's been obviously parodied, parodied um, by a lot of people. And he's just such a he's such a force to be reckoned with. And uh, I c you know I, c I can see why at the time he was so popular with the with the fan base because he was just so awesome, and he was genuinely just a badass henchman. And we haven't really seen like seen like a henchman on this kind of level in since well Odd Job, I'd say really. Um, I really like Jaws, and that's kind of why. Um, when in my next review, when I talk about Moonraker, this cuts kind of the, one of the main problems I discuss in that review. Anyway, uh, let's get on to some of the more of the cast. Once you've got Bernard Lee as M, who doesn't make that much of an appearance. I mean, obviously he's in the film, but um, I would have liked to have seen him more in the film. And same with Money Penny. I think she only gets like what four lines. This is one of the smallest Money Penny cameos I can really remember. I mean, apart from maybe License to Kill, where she's only literally in for like one scene and says like a few words, and that's it. But then I really do. It's really it's a real shame that she's not really in this film that much because I think Money Penny um, is a great character, and I think in the Roger Moore era she's just not really that well utilized for the most part, and the chemistry just isn't as as good as it was with say Maxwell and Connery or Maxwell and Lazenby for me personally. Um, and we see obviously Q play uh, played by Desmond Llewellyn once again. He introduces the um, Lotus Esprit car um and you know just any q i always just love seeing q he's one of my favorite characters in the entire series especially desmond llewellyn's take on him i think he's just such a fun like character and he's he's despite not having a big role again he's still fun um as always 
We see an introduction of a new character who we'd see fairly often throughout these films now. General Gogol, played by Walter Gattel, I believe it's pronounced. If I'm wrong, I apologise. Um, he's a, you know, I, I do like the General Gogol character. It's I like seeing characters who appear consistently in the series. And, you know, it's it, again, I think he's a great character. And um, I'll discuss him more in other films. Because um, his role in this isn't that huge. But, you know, he's, I guess you could say the Russian equivalent of M, I don't know if you'd really want to say that, but he's kind of like that, and yeah, he's a, he's a fun character, you know, he's got obviously, um, you know, we obviously see him more in other films, um, so yeah. Um, the score now is done by Marvin Hamlish, and it was good to kind of see, again, like I said with George Martin in Live and Let Die, it was good to see a kind of a fresh composer take on a Bond film. And as I said uh, uh, before, I do really like John Barry, I think he's a great composer, and he's composed some of my favourite scores in the entire series. But I do actually really like this series. It kind of feels like a like a um, some, feels like you know some fresh air into the series. Um, I mean, some people will probably say it's quite dated. This score, it's very seventies, but I still like it. I think it's um, it works in this film, and it's I still personally really enjoy the music in this film. And obviously, you've got the main title song uh, by Carly Simon. Nobody does it better. That's again one of my favourites. I think that really suits the tone of the film as well. Um, so all around, I'd say the score for The Spy Love Me is a big thumbs up for me. It's definitely a, a highlight of this really good film, in overall, really. So when it comes to some of the key scenes in The Spy Who Loved Me, um, there's it's it's one of those films that it has quite a lot of iconic scenes in it and just great moments overall. It's one of the Bond films that's parodied quite a lot in, you know, when TV shows do spin-offs of, like, James Bond. Like, one comes the one that comes to mind for me personally is, like, American Dad when they obviously like parody the snow the you know the opening title scenes with the ski chase and obviously you know you've got Austin Powers with the title of their film you know the spy who shagged me so you know it's it's one of those bond films like that gets um it's it's very well known and it gets you know parodied quite a lot um so what are the, what are, I think are some of the good scenes in this film I say the opening title sequence as I said it's great great um, scene. Definitely one of the best opening title sequences of the entire series really. Just, you know, we have the great stunt at the end and the iconic scene with the Union Jack parachute popping out and that and that kind of transitions into the opening title song. You know, the chase in, as well where Bond kills Anya's lover and that creates the whole kind of, um, you know, creating something that we know but um, Anya doesn't know until right into the film which I think creates a lot of intrigue as well. And, you know, you're kind of anticipating when she'll know and when she'll find out and how she'll react. Um, and another, one Strongberg scene, I think, really is great, actually. Um, and showed me and really made me think, you know, he had this character had potential if he'd just been given more screen time. And that's where Strongberg feeds the woman to the sharks and plays that classical music. And he kind of speaks over it while she's getting just completely maimed by the shark. It's a brutal scene, but I really like it, I think. Um, and, admit, the, and Kurt Jurgens is great in this scene, I think. If he'd just had more time, I think Strongberg would have been actually a great Bond villain. But unfortunately, he didn't really get that. Um, and his death scene, Stromberg, I think is very anticlimactic. He tries to fire through a you know a bullet through the, through this hole and he has underneath the table at Bond. Bond dodges and then he shoots through him. And it looks like he shoots him in the dick, which is a bit weird. But um, yeah. A, but I do. I just think it was a shame that Strongbow was kind of wasted, and that scene with the, him feeding the woman to the sharks is actually a very good scene. Um, obviously, the fights with Jaws are really great, and the one at the end where you know Bond throws him into the shark tank and Jaws kills the shark. I just think that's awesome. Like I think that's just why I love Jaws. He's just such a badass character who can just pretty much take on anyone. I think that's awesome, and it's cool that he survives. I think that's really awesome. Um, and you've obviously got the classic um, Lotus of Spirit chase. Um, definitely one of the best car chases in the series, and then that transitions into the um, the submarine, the sub, the submarine uh, being, you know, obviously the Lotus Spirit turning into the submarine. That's awesome. I think that's such a great moment, and Anya's reaction to that is really great as well. Um, and I, I think that's just probably one of my favourite scenes in the entire film and in the series as well. So overall, The Spy Who Loved Me, I think, is definitely a very good film. I definitely would put this in my top ten. For me, personally, I think it misses out on the top five purely because I think the villain was lacking. I think, for me, my obviously, I did do a, a ranking of the Bonds on my old, on my, on my uh, main channel, but I, got, I put it on private and I want to put it on this channel because the list is slightly rejigged. Um, but 
my top five is still the same, uh, actually. But I just think for a film to be a top five Bond films, you need to have, you know, the main aspect of the film kind of on point. You know, like the Bond, um, you know, the the Bond girl and the villain. And unfortunately, I think what holds The Spy Who Loved Me back for me is Stromberg and just how he's not utilised as well as he could have been. And I think just the other fir- the other five films I prefer. Um, but this just misses out on the top five. Um kind of just hovers outside it, maybe like five, number six or seven for me personally. Uh, but there's definitely some great iconic moments, and it's definitely worthy of being in the top ten for me. And I think it's great. It kind of, it's one of those classic films that it has the, the kind of campiness of some of those Roger Moore films, but it it doesn't go too far, and it's just the right amount of, um, you know, campiness for me personally. And I definitely think this is Roger Moore's best film, uh, the best Roger Moore James Bond film. Um, you know, I, I did really like Live and Let Die, as I said, that's probably my second favourite, but um, I, I just think this one just is so, so well done, and the scope of everything as well. You can tell they really went all out for this film, because the Wham! The Golden Gun obviously was critically kind of slandered a bit, so I think they really wanted to prove that the Bond series wasn't dying, so they went all out on this, and some of the set designs are really nice in this film. Um, so overall, I re- really like The Spy Who Loved Me, I think it's a very good film, I definitely recommend you watch it. So thanks for watching, guys. Uh, My next review will be of 1979's Moonraker. Give the video a like, subscribe, follow me on Twitter and ask.fm. And once again, thanks for watching, guys.